Something that legal systems all over the world still struggle with is how we should treat murderers and other criminals who happen to be kids. In some very extreme cases, usually in the US, kids who commit severe offenses can be tried as over 18s, meaning they get longer, harder sentences if found guilty. But there are controversies around this. A number of people who commit crimes as kids come to heavily regret their actions later in life. No matter which way you look at it, it's been verified that you can't fully comprehend your actions until you're a grown-up. However, as kids become more exposed to disturbing grown-up content online and out in the real world, the severity of their crimes increases. Today, we're looking at the case of a boy who suffered an awful, painful death at the hands of his girlfriend, a 13-year-old who ordered a hit on him. Let's dive right into the tragic death of Oliver Stevens. Preferring to go by Ollie, this typical teenage boy grew up in Reading in the UK. He was really well liked by his friends, but had kind of a tough time in school. Ollie was diagnosed with autism and had a difficult time focusing and following instructions. However, he had a loving personality and a kind smile that made it pretty impossible for anyone to stay mad at him. In the quiet suburban neighborhood of Emmer Green, where Ollie lived with his family, crime rates were pretty low. However, Reading had seen a 9% increase in crimes that caused harm to other people, as well as a 12% increase in crimes involving weapons. Unfortunately, many parts of the UK are experiencing an extreme rise in knife crime. These crimes have increased by 84% since 2014, and 24 children under the age of 17 died from a knife injury in 2019 alone. In January of this year, Ollie would become part of that statistic. On January 3rd, 2021, Ollie got a message on Snapchat from someone in his neighborhood, asking him to meet them at Bug Bottom Park, which was just a couple minutes away from his home. He lived near the park his whole life, and it isn't somewhere thought to be dangerous. In fact, it's a popular place for people to walk their dogs, for people to go jogging alone, and for families to spend time outdoors. However, on this day, as it was already dark at 4 p.m., Ollie had no idea what would be waiting for him. Because this case is still pretty new, not all of the details are available to the public yet. For example, nobody knows if there was any kind of conversation or altercation between Ollie and his attackers before he was attacked. All we know is that in the park, Ollie was stabbed in the back with a samurai sword and bled out while trying to run back home. Police were called pretty much immediately after the incident when Ollie was spotted as he tried to escape to his home. Unfortunately, despite a passerby attempting to perform CPR on him, Ollie died at the scene. He was just 13. Ollie's death totally shook the small community he grew up in, and his family received countless messages from neighbors and strangers offering their condolences. People even put bunches of flowers at the gates of his school to pay their respects to the teen. More than anything, people wanted to know how this could have happened to someone who was seemingly so loved. It didn't take long before theories started to crop up. Ollie had a girlfriend of the same name, and they had a difficult relationship to say the least. Since she can't be named by the media due to her age, all referred to her as Jane. In the weeks leading before his death, Ollie got into an argument with Jane after he found out she was allegedly sending photos to other guys. I can totally get why he would be upset by this since doing that shows a real lack of respect that Jane had for their relationship. Well, Jane was mad at Ollie that he got mad at her. Instead of doing the conventional things like, you know, talking it out or breaking up if they couldn't work past it, she took to Snapchat to find her solution. On her Snapchat story, Jane asked for someone to volunteer to do a job for her. She wanted to teach Ollie a lesson, shake him up real good, but make sure he came out of it alive. In the story, she said she wanted someone to rob him and stab him, but not fatally. In her words, in the hand or something. She offered 154 pounds and 94 cents to whoever took the job, which is about $215. She wanted it done as soon as possible, and she was willing to lure Ollie to a location so the deed could be carried out. After these details, details emerged, five teens were arrested for Ollie's murder, including Jane. The other four were all boys. However, as the investigation continued, two suspects were dropped from the case, and Jane, along with two remaining boys, were charged. The toll Ollie's death took on the community was not made any easier by the ongoing pandemic. Rachel Cave, the head teacher of High Down School, which Ollie attended, commented that it was much harder to offer support to his fellow students and members of staff 
due to lockdown restrictions. Worst of all was the devastation experienced by Ollie's family. At his funeral, Ollie's dad, Stuart, described how getting the news from the police was the stuff of nightmares. On social media, Ollie's sister, Amelia, described the total heartbreak she felt from losing her brother. In one post, she shared a photo of Ollie from when he was a baby and expressed her grief in the caption. I'm so sorry I failed you. I wish I could have saved you from it all. We will get justice for you, my angel. In a later statement, his family said that since his passing, there was an Ollie-sized hole left in their hearts. Ollie's funeral took place on February 5th, a little over a month after he passed away. The streets were lined by hundreds of friends and neighbors who wanted to pay their respects to the team. As the hearse drove through the streets, people threw red roses onto the car. They also wore red clothes instead of the traditional black, since red was his favorite color. The three teens charged with his murder aren't set to go to trial until later this summer. This is due to a number of reasons. Mainly, the fact that it's super difficult for the court system in the UK to operate as normal right now, with all the lockdown restrictions. Until they get their day in court, the perpetrators are staying in a youth detention center. Hopefully, once that happens, Ollie will get the justice he deserves. But then that begs the questions. How far should these people be punished if found guilty? There's been a lot of talk online about what should happen to Ollie's killers and the limitations of the law due to their age. Many believe the killers, as well as Jane, should be tried and punished as grown-ups due to how awful this crime was. However, others say that even though what happened to Ollie was extremely Dream, especially for kids, that's exactly what the perpetrators are, children. It's super difficult to think about right now, but no doubt there will be more discussion around this issue when the trial happens in June, if all goes to plan. What do you guys think of this case? Should Jane and the other culprits face the same penalties as grown-ups in this situation? As always, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys think down in the comments below.